Exploring the emotions of students in classroom videos can help both teachers and parents know about students' learning status and further help teachers improve teaching. However, it is a non-trivial task to analyze the emotion evolution of a group of people from classroom videos due to three major challenges. We propose a visualization system which integrates the model uncertainty and supports both collective and individual emotion analysis. Tableau helps you see the stories in your data. It's designed to help you be smarter so you can make better decisions faster. Connect to the data you care about. Sort, highlight, drill down, or filter your data in seconds. Add calculations to extend your data. With Tableau, you can keep on asking questions in the data until you discover the root cause. Tableau, answer questions at the speed of thought. We miss you. Indeed. We miss you being in New Orleans. We also miss doing what New Orleanians so often do best. Welcoming you to our city, telling you about our favorite places, and watching you truly experience the absolute beauty and indescribable magic of this incredibly special place. Everything that you know and love about New Orleans is not only here waiting for you, but it's better than ever. We have been busy getting ready for your arrival and have considered every detail of your visit with world-class dining, a brand new airport, new museums and attractions, and hotels to fit your every need and desire. Our world-class convention center is completing a beautiful new pedestrian park and is beginning renovations to other facilities. We'll even have gumbo on the stove and our musicians are tuning their instruments. So when it comes time for you to return, we'll welcome you back to our table and celebrate with you our 300-year-old traditions. And we know that you will create new ones along the way. Good morning, New Orleans. We love you, New Orleans. Just know that we're thinking of you here in the Crescent City. And we can't wait to see you soon. Love New Orleans. When people come, they never leave. Because we're swinging that way, the sun shines so, so bright. The breeze is so, so nice. Tableau helps you see the stories in your data. It's designed to help you be smarter 
so you can make better decisions faster. With Tableau, you can keep on asking questions in the data until you discover the root cause. Share your analysis securely. Your entire organization can access these interactive dashboards from any browser or mobile device to find their own answers. Tableau, answer questions at the speed of thought. We present a framework for the visual exploration of spine simulation data. We show the force distribution on spinal discs, enable assessments of imbalances and reveal impact vectors that were not accessible before. This is a novel direction in medical visualization and we hope that it might bridge the gap between biomechanical research and clinical application. Different sampling strategies have different performances in preserving features, but which one is the best? In this paper, we selected seven sampling strategies along with eight representative data sets and three important visual factors. We formulated four hypotheses and conducted a user study with 100 participants. For the derived insights, please refer to our paper. What do you believe is the correlation between labor union participation and corporate profits of different companies? How would you update your belief after seeing this scatter plot? In this study, we use a new elicitation technique to understand how people update their beliefs about correlations after seeing different visualizations with and without uncertainty depictions. Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, session on sampling. Today we have five interesting paper presentations in this session and I would like to ask you to post your questions on Discord or on YouTube and I will uh, then direct them to the speakers after the presentations. So the first speaker with us here today is Yi Tao Wu, who will be presenting uh, the paper Preserving Minority Structures in Graph Sampling, which has also received an honorable mention this year's conference. So let's see the presentation. Hello everyone, I am Wu Yitao from Central South University. The paper I'm going to present is Preserving Minority Structures in Graph Sampling. Our presentation has seven parts. The first part is introduction. Graphs contain plentiful structures. They can be categorized from diverse perspectives. In this work, we categorize graph structures into majority and minority, which depends on their occurrence frequencies and sizes in the graph. Majority structures occur frequently, such as frequent subgraphs, or are large-sized, such as communities. Minority structures are rare and contain only a few nodes, such as extremely high degree nodes and bridges between communities. Both categories are important in graph analysis. Sampling is an efficient graph reduction technique. Many graph sampling algorithms are proposed. They are particularly useful in accelerating graph computations and simplifying graph visualizations. For example, in the left figure, when 30% nodes remain after sampling, the internal structure in dense areas can be observed. 
We have an interesting observation to graph sampling. Existing algorithms tend to preserve majority structures but overload minority structures, because majority structures have considerable influence on the representativeness of the original graph, but of minority structures, the influence is negligible. For example, the two graph samples obtained by the forest fire and the random word algorithms fail to preserve the minority structures, namely the colored nodes in the original graph. So, we raise three questions. 1. Whether and which minority structures are important in graph analysis? 2. Can minority structures be effectively preserved by existing algorithms? 3. How to preserve minority structures while maintaining majority structures? To answer these three questions, we conduct a pilot user study and an experimental study and propose a new graph sampling algorithm. The pilot user study is to answer question 1. We recruited 20 participants and selected 34 real-world graph datasets. The test was to select any structures of interest named SOIs in the graphs. The result analysis consists of three steps. 1. Record the SOIs and selection sequence of each participant on each graph. 2. Categorize all SOIs into eight types. 3. Count the entries for each SOI type in orders. This table shows the result. Global high degree, margin, boundary, and community structures are considered as most appealing in interactive graph explorations. Because their entries are clearly above the average. Among them, global high degree, margin, and boundary structures belong to minority structures, whereas community structure belongs to the majority. We finally obtain four representative types of minority structures. One, a super private is a node that its degree is within the global top 5% and its neighbors have at least one interconnection. Two, a huge star is a node that its degree is above the global mean and the neighbors do not interconnect. Three, a rim is a set of parachute light or train light nodes that occur in the margins of communities. Four, a tie is a sequence of nodes bridging two communities. The experimental study is to answer the question 2. We selected 10 real-world graph datasets. We identified and labeled the minority structures in the 10 datasets. We selected 20 reference algorithms. Each algorithm ran 800 trials. We designed three quantitative indicators. MSPR, Minority Structure Preservation Rate indicates whether an algorithm has a low ability to preserve minority structures. MSGR, new minority structure generation rate, indicates whether an algorithm produces new minority structures in a sample. MIP, mean importance precision, indicates whether an algorithm can preserve the top k important minority structures in their orders. The table shows the result and both indicator values are empirically good. The MSPR results show that most algorithms cannot effectively preserve minority structures. Five algorithms performed well in preserving superpivots individually, and only SST performed well in preserving rooms. For MSGR, most algorithms can effectively suppress the generation of new superpivots, but most algorithms failed in huge stars, rooms, and ties. For MIP, no algorithm can guarantee the preservation of important minority structures as well as their orders. For example, the first largest superpivot in the original graph may become the second or third largest in the sample. So, it is very clear that the answer to question 2 is no. We also learned a couple of design considerations from the result. We proposed a new algorithm called Minocentric Graph Sampling, the MCGS. The pipeline consists of four steps. The first step is to identify minority structures by using two algorithms. The first is a triangular-based algorithm for superpivot and huge star identification. The second is a catapult-based algorithm for rim and tie identification. The second step is to rank minority structures based on importance assessment criteria. First, we define that the importance of a minority structure is related to its degree, size, or length. Then, 
we ran the full set of minority structures separately. At last, we select the most important ones based on the given sampling rate. Step three is to preserve important minority structures, and randomly select their neighbors into the sample according to the sampling rate based on an improved RAS sampling method. This step output an uncompleted sample, which contains some minority structures in the proportion of their neighbors. Step four is majority structure sampling, including two parts. Elect the other nodes into the sample based on a greedy optimization strategy and output an induced subgraph as the completed sample. Our loss function in the greedy strategy aims to make the completed sample similar to the original as much as possible. We evaluate the proposed MCGS algorithm through an objective performance analysis. We conduct 12 groups of significance tests for MCGS and the 20 references. Blue cells in the table indicate the winners in significance tests. Bold cells indicate the empirical good indicator meetings. The results show that MCGS won 12 times in the significance test and performed best 11 times in terms of indicator meetings. We use four common indicators to analyze the performance of majority structure preservation. MCGS became the winners on three indicators. For the time performance, MCGS is at the low median level compared with the 20 reference algorithms. The main reason is that MCGS has additional computation steps during random sampling. Here, we demonstrate three cases. This is the first one. This graph has 6,000 nodes and more than 13,000 edges. We focus four SOIs in the graph and analyze three samples. The RDN sample presents good overall shape and density. Five superpivot in SOI1 are maintained. The superpivot in SOI3 is well preserved. The huge star in SOI4 is retained but lost neighbors. The SST sample presents a low similarity of the overall shape. Five superpivot in SOI1 are maintained. The superpivot in SOI3 loses many interconnections between two neighbors. The huge star in SOI4 loses. The MCGS sample presents good overall shape and density, also has a good preservation of the four SOIs. The second graph has 800 nodes, 2000 edges. We observe the top four rims and their importance order. The FF sample loses three rims and forms a new rim. The Thai sample preserves the four rims, but their orders is changed. The MCGS sample preserves the four rims and their orders. In the third case, we invite all audience to take part in. There are six samples obtained by six sampling algorithms respectively. In your opinion, which one is the best graph sample by visual perception? We recruited 20 participants to do the same thing on 34 graphs. MCGS obtained the highest average rating in terms of all six metrics. At the end, I'd like to discuss the limitations of this work. For pilot study, in different scenarios, the importance of SOI types and the definitions of minority structure types could be adjusted. In the experimental study, our MCGS is mainly suitable for graph analysis oriented to minority structures. Its ability for other scenarios remains unknown. For algorithm study, we mainly use scale-free graphs in this work. It needs to be checked whether the MCGS is applicable for other types of graphs. Our MCGS is a sampling algorithm on the data space. For large-scale graphs, the visualizations after sampling still present severe visual clutters, even at a very low sampling rate. It is worth to explore if sampling in the visual space can solve this challenge. In conclusion, we conducted a pilot user study and identified four representative types of minority structures. We conducted an experimental study and examined the performance of existing algorithms on minority structure preservation. We designed a new graph sampling algorithm named MCGS that can balance the preservation of minority and majority structures in graph samples.
That's all about my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Um, we will now uh, check for some questions. And I see that we have a question from Jim Green that asks, if it is possible that a defined minority structure in one graph becomes a majority structure in another different network. Uh, well, thank you for your question. Uh, actually, we mainly focus on social networks, web networks, and communication networks. So, in this what in this networks, the phenomenon you just described is not probably going to happen. Of course, it may appear in some special networks such as uh, biological protein networks. But I think in these cases, the definition of minority structures should be adjusted based on the based on different scenarios, and it remains to be confirmed in different cases, whether such a user-involved exploratory experiment as ours is appropriate. Uh, that's about it. Hope this can solve your puzzles. Thank you for your answer. Uh, we have another question um, that uh, states, um, what are the application scenarios of the proposed algorithm? Uh, how does it work? So, Maybe. Uh, well, I think there are at least two evident fields where our algorithm can make a difference. Uh, there, there are social network analysis and cybersecurity analysis. Uh, let me introduce such an application scenario. Suppose we want to analyze a malware family network, but the tremendous number of files made it, made it impossible to visualize the entire network for severe visual clutter. So, graph simply should play a part. And however, most malware families are classified by algorithms and labeled by real engine. We do lack intuitive perceptions from graph structures and their behavior similarities. And out of this consideration, a cybersecurity op operator can use our simple algorithm to help perceive graph structures and quickly find anomalies when, ex when exploring and classifying uh, like malware families, uh, that's about it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there are more uh, questions on uh, Discord, which I would like to ask you to answer there because now we need to go on to the next presentation. Um, so our next uh, presenter is uh, uh, Chen Shi, who will be presenting their work on context-aware sampling of large networks via graph representation learning. Let's see presentation. Hi, everyone. My name is Chen Shi. I'm from Zhejiang University of Finance and Economics. It's my great honor to give a talk about context-aware sampling of large networks via graph representation learning. This is the agenda of my talk. The first part is motivation. Network is able to encode relationships among entities in our daily life. Graph visualization allows users to gain structure inside of networks. With the increase of data size, node and edges overlap with each other and generate much visual cluster in large graph visualizations. Many sampling strategies are proposed to simplify the visualization of large-scale networks. However, such strategies largely focus on sampling efficiency and randomness, while pay little attention to the prioritization of significant contextual structures. Contextual structures are significant for the exploration of networks, such as communities, important nodes, and connected paths. However, it's difficult to preserve contextual structures in the sampled graph because they are easily overlooked due to their irregular distribution and immunity to scale. 
Graph representation learning is an effective way to represent the contextual structures of large networks. It transforms nodes into vectors to quantitate the structure features of networks. We believe that it would be a feasible way to conduct graph sampling in the vectorized space, and the contextual structures would be preserved as far as possible. However, there are still several problems to overcome. 1. The vectorized space is too complicated to gain insights due to these high dimensions. 2. The new graph sampling should be conducted in the vectorized space rather than original network space. 3. It is difficult to conduct a unified graph sampling scheme to preserve various kinds of contextual structures in the vectorized space due to their respective representations. 4. It is a tough task to evaluate the same graphs from different perspectives and further validate the preservation of contextual structures. After detailed discussions with domain experts, we summarize four requirements. 1. A feature space is demanded in which the contextual structures can be better represented. 2. A unified context-aware sampling model is required to preserve different kinds of contextual structures. 3. A set of evaluation metrics are demanded to evaluate the effectiveness of sampled graphs, especially in the preservation of contextual structures. 4. A visualization framework is required to help users to simplify and explore the large networks in real time. To address this issue, we propose a context-aware graph sampling method. First, Contextual structures are represented and visualized by node 2 week and TSNE. Then, we propose a multi-objective blue noise sampling model to select a subset of nodes in the vectorized space, preserving both the contextual structures and significant topological features. Meanwhile, we design a visual interface enabling users to interactively conduct a context-aware sampling visually compare sampling results and deeply explore large networks. Finally, case studies and quantitative comparisons are conducted to demonstrate the effectiveness of our method. The context-aware graph sampling method includes two steps. The first process is context representation. We first utilize node 2 week to embed contextual structures of original large networks into quantitative vectors. The process includes corpus generation, vectorized representation, and dimension reduction. The second process is context-aware sampling. We design a multi-objective blue noise sampling model integrating multiply objectives. First, we conduct an adaptive blue noise sampling in the vectorized space to generate a subset of nodes. All contextual structures will be retained in the sampled graphs, no matter where they are distributed or how much their size are. Then, we integrate a set of optional objectives into the sampling model to preserve topological features such as node importance and graph connection. Concretely, we integrate between this into the sampling model to increase the probability of being representative for those important nodes. Meanwhile, we enhance the connection relationships of sampled graphs by means of a backtracking traversal across different person disks. In the part of evaluation, six networks are utilized to evaluate the effectiveness of our sampling method. Three categories of sampling strategies are conducted for comparison. Node-based, ORS, RNS, Edge-based, RES, TIES, and Child-based, SRW, RJ, ISRW. A set of metrics are used to evaluate the validity of sampled networks from different perspectives including betweenness degree and closeness centrality, just path length and connected component, quantitative similarity and structure stability, 
local and global clustering coefficients. We firstly compare the performance of different sampling strategies. This table presents the metrics for a web-based dataset obtained by seven sampling strategies. The sampling rate is specified as 10%. Our method performs based on most metrics and a little inferior than SRW or ISRW on LCC and SSC. But SRW and ISRW often lose global features of networks, as shown in GCC and QSC. By contrast, our method gains more balanced representation of desired features. This figure presents the overview of the ranking performance of metrics for all datasets. Result 1. Our method outperforms on metrics about node and connection indicating that important nodes with high betweenness degree and graph connection are well preserved. Result 2. Our method also performs based on the metrics about community and cluster, indicating that our method makes a good balance between the preservation of local features and global structures. Generally, our method preserves feature distribution more reasonably and stably. Then, case studies are conducted based on three real-world datasets. Case 1. There are three of Wales communities in the Bitcoin network. Each community represents a different trending model. Then, we use a variety of sampling strategies to simplify the graph. TIES returns C1 and C2, but their scales are smaller than expected. Moreover, the structures of C3 are immediately broken. ISRW returns C1 and C2 but loses C3. Our method returns C1, C2, and C3 and preserves their scales as uniform as possible. The results prove that our method can retain the connection and original structures of communities in a relatively balanced way. Case 2. We compare the preservation of important nodes in a citation network. Five nodes with larger business are highlighted such as A, B, C, D, and E. There are important nodes in the citation network representing important figures in the specific field. When the sampling rate is specified as 15%, two nodes are retained with RNS and three nodes are retained with TIES. Almost all nodes are retained with our method and ISRW. Then we decrease the sampling rate as 10%. Important nodes disappear in the sampling results such as RNS, TIES, and ISRW. But our method returns almost all significant nodes presenting fan stability. In the third case, we use a connected web-based network consisting of many connected communities. RNS generates a large number of disconnected components. The similar result is obtained with TIES. By contrast, ISRW and our method seem to well maintain the connection of original network. Then we focus on the distribution histograms of APL. It can be observed that APL distributions of ISRW are concentrated between 0 to 11 indicating that those with smaller distance are retained and those with longer distance are missed. By contrast, APL distributions of our method are located from 0 to 18, presenting similar to original graph. It indicates that major paths are retained well in our sampled graph. There are still some issues not well resolved in its paper, which will be addressed in the future work. Some errors may be generated due to the randomness of GRL and approximation of dimensionally reduction with TSNE.
Bruno noise sampling will bring the sampled graphs with some uncertainty. Many other GRL models are supposed to be integrated into our sampling method. In conclusion, a context-aware sampling model is proposed to reduce the visual cluster of large graph visualization with the contextual structures of interest preserved in the sampled graphs. A rich set of visual designs and metrics are designed, enabling users to visually evaluate and interactively optimize the sampled graphs. The effectiveness of our sampling method in simplified large networks with contextual structures preserved is better demonstrated with case studies and quantitative comparisons based on the real-world dataset. That's all my talk. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, you're getting many claps here on the chat. Um, I have a question uh, concerning uh, the dimensionality reduction method that you have used. How sensitive is your algorithm to this choice? And have you tested other approaches or other reduction methods? Mm -hmm. uh. Uh, I, uh, we, uh, um, I'm not sure your question. Okay. Um, let's take a question from uh, the chat instead. Uh, could you please give some information about the uh, running time and the scalability of your algorithm? Well, because we used the, the not too weak. It is a, a graph a graph representation learning method. So our running time is a bit long, um, but I think, but we think it's uh, uh, can uh, it's can it's it's a uh, affordable uh, cost. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Uh, any more questions? I think you have to take on the Discord because we need to move on to the next presentation now. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. So our next presenter is uh, uh, Yun Wang, and who will present uh, their work on evaluation of sampling methods for scatter plots. Please. Hello, everyone. I'm Jun Yuan from Tsinghua University. Today, I'd like to introduce our work, Evaluation of Sampling Methods for Scatter Plots. This is a joint work with Shouxing, Jia Zhi, Ling Yun, and Shi Xia. As we know, scatter plots are one of the most widely used visual representations in exploratory data analysis. However, as data grows in size, they become less effective because of the scalability issues like overdrawing. Sampling is a common solution to the scalability issues in visualizing large datasets with scatter plots. The visualization community has developed a large number of sampling methods, but they have different performances in preserving different features. We can hardly tell which one is the best result. The motivation of our work is to find out which sampling methods perform well in terms of different visual factors from the perspective of perception thus providing guidance for users to select appropriate sampling strategies when meeting with different needs. Next, we move on to the related work. There are mainly two parts of work related to our evaluation. One part is about sampling methods developed for scatter plots. Another is about evaluation of sampling, but they either focus on some specific situations such as graph sampling or just evaluated a specific sampling method to show its capability. 
Different from these evaluation works, our work evaluated a number of representative sampling methods for scatter plots based on the result of a systematic survey. The papers considered in our survey are published from 2010 to 2019 covering IEEE TVCG and three mainstream conferences in visualization community. We use sampling as the keyword to search for the candidate papers and obtain more than 1,500 initial papers. After a careful manual review, 25 papers remained in our survey. Finally, we selected seven sampling strategies along with eight representative datasets and three important visual factors to be included in our evaluation from these papers. Here are the seven selected sampling strategies. These sampling strategies are either widely used or reported to perform the best in terms of their design requirements. We also selected eight datasets previously used in the papers as our experiment data. As can be seen in this figure, these datasets show two kinds of characteristics and different levels of visual clusters after processing and projecting them into 2D plane. In these six datasets, points are located as clusters, while in the other two, points are located as curved stripes. We selected both kinds of datasets as our experiment data to ensure the reliability of our evaluation results. Furthermore, we identified three important visual factors that are mostly concerned in our survey results. Relative density is mentioned in seven out of the 25 papers, followed by outliers and overall shape. Based on the selected sampling strategies and visual factors, we formulated four hypotheses. In terms of relative density, we have two hypotheses respectively. First, we hypothesize that all other sampling strategies perform better than random sampling in preserving relative region density. Second, we hypothesize that multi-class sampling strategies perform better than other sampling strategies in preserving relative class density. In terms of outliers, we hypothesize that outlier bias density-based sampling is the best in preserving outliers. Finally, in terms of overall shape, we hypothesize that blue noise sampling and multi-class blue noise sampling perform better than other sampling strategies in preserving the overall shape. Before the formal study, we conducted a pre-study to identify the sampling number for each dataset and confirm the color deficiency in relative region density recognition. For more detailed information, please refer to our paper. Then we introduced the experiment's design to explore the four hypotheses. In experiment one, we aim to test if the region with higher region density can still be recognized as the higher one after sampling. Therefore, we randomly marked out two square regions with the same size and asked participants to select the region with the higher density without considering class labels. To eliminate the perceptual deficiency caused by color, according to our pre-study, we render the points with only a dark gray color. We recorded the correctness and completion time of each trial. In contrast to experiment 1, experiment 2 focuses on preserving relative density of specific classes in the same region instead of relative region density. Therefore, we marked out a square region and asked participants to select a class with higher average density in the math region from two specified classes. Similarly, we recorded the correctness and completion time of each trial. In experiment 3, we wanted to test whether an outlier in the original dataset can still be preserved and perceived as an outlier after sampling. And, in case a point is perceived as an outlier after sampling, whether it is indeed an outlier in the original dataset. To this end, we marked out a rectangular region in each scatter plot and participants were asked to mark the outliers referring to all points, assuming that they believed outliers existed in the marked region. We calculated the precision and recall of each trial based on the ground truth of outliers. Different from experiment 1 to experiment 3, experiment 4 is a subjective experiment, and participants were asked to rank the seven sampling results based on the shape similarities between sampling results and the original scatter plot. We recorded the ranking of each sampling strategy in each trial and transformed the rankings into scores. Let's move on to the experiment settings. We recruited 100 participants for the formal study. 
They were required to complete the experiment using a monitor with a fixed resolution and share their screen with the instructor. The testing data were generated in advance using the selected datasets, and the sampling number for each dataset was determined by a pre-study, and points would be rendered in a random order without transparency. Next comes to our results. Hypothesis 1 is rejected as random sampling performs the best in preserving relative region density. Look at these charts. Random sampling obtains both the highest accuracy and the least completion time in this task. As for the pairwise significance, random sampling performs significantly better than two other sampling strategies in terms of accuracy, and it performs significantly better than four other sampling strategies in terms of average completion time. Hypothesis 2 is partially confirmed as multicast sampling strategies achieve higher accuracy except for blue noise sampling, while random sampling performs the best in terms of completion time. These results can be seen in these charts. However, it should be mentioned that no significant difference in accuracy is reported with the fragment test. Then we turn to the pairwise significance relationship of completion time and find that random sampling performs significantly better than two other sampling strategies. Without significant differences reported in accuracy, we consider that random sampling also have good performance in preserving relative class density. Hypothesis 3 is partially confirmed, as recursive subdivision-based sampling and outlier bias density-based sampling achieve higher record than other sampling strategies, while blue noise sampling has the highest precision. These results can be also be revealed in these charts. Also, no significant difference in precision is reported with the fragment test. When it turns to the pairwise significance relationship of recall, outlier bias density-based sampling performs significantly better than two other sampling strategies. We can conclude that outlier bias density-based sampling is among the best in preserving outliers, together with recursive subdivision-based sampling and blue noise sampling. Finally, Hypothesis 4 is also partially confirmed as blue noise sampling gets the highest score, but multicast blue noise sampling performs at the middle level. From this figure, we can find that blue noise sampling has the highest average score of more than 6. However, recursive subdivision-based sampling, outlier bias density-based sampling, and multicast blue noise sampling have similar scores of around 4.5 and rank 2nd, 3rd, and 4th respectively. Let's summarize the above results briefly. First, since blue noise sampling has competitive results in all experiments, it is suggested to be more generally used in data exploration. Second, random sampling performs comparatively well in both experiment 1 and experiment 2, indicating that it is still a competitive choice when users seek to preserve the relative density in the sampled scatter plots, given its simplicity. In addition, as outlier bias density-based sampling and recursive subdivision-based sampling show their capabilities in outlier maintenance and shape preservation, users may pay more attention to them when encountering such practical needs. There are a few discussions reflecting our experiments. Through a subjective questionnaire, the average ratings of relative density, outliers, and overall shape are comparatively high. The high ratings confirm that the evaluated visual factors are common concerns in scatter plot sampling. However, different people have different focuses on visual factors. For example, participants in computer vision and deep learning focus more on the preservation of overall shape, while participants in visualization and computer graphics may focus more on the outliers. This indicates that sampling strategies should be selected according to specific tasks. We also interviewed the participants for the influencing factors on perception in the experiments. They reported that covering area and distance among points affect the perception of relative region density, while color affects the perception of relative class density. Besides, in the overall shape preservation task, the outline of the shape is the most important factor for consideration. These results will shed light on the design of further experiments as well as scatter plot sampling strategies. To sum up, different sampling strategies have different performances in preserving features, and our results offer practical guidance for the selection of sampling strategies in different application scenarios. 
Some promising future directions include conducting further evaluation considering the factors affecting the perception and exploring the perception effects of sampling strategies when they are performed in the high dimensional space. Thanks for your attention. Our code for scatterplot sampling is public in the following link. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much for your presentation, Jun Wan. Um, you're getting applause here on the Discord channel. And uh, um, Gulam Quadri has a question uh, and a comment. Great and comprehensive uh, work on sampling in a scatter plot. And he asked that different data sets were used for the evaluation. Did uh, various shapes or patterns, uh, were various shapes or patterns considered in the study to investigate the sampling performance with the given metrics? Okay. okay, thank you very much for your question. Um, we select two kinds of data sets in our evaluation. And one kind is that the, the data sets will, will be clustered as uh, will be shown in clusters, and the other one is that the data set is shown in curved stripes. Uh, we designed two questions for each data set in the experiment one and experiment two, and uh, we we have uh, investigated the average accuracy and the average completion time uh, among the different uh, different questions in in this data set, but we do not find that uh, the patterns or the shapes of a data set will uh, favor some of the uh, some some of the sampling methods. Uh, maybe the questions is uh, too few because we have only eight data sets and totally sixteen questions in experiment one or in experiment two. But I think it is a an interesting question and maybe more data. Uh, to investigate this, uh, more data to be included in this in in this evaluation, uh, will get some interesting findings about the shapes or the patterns of the data sets. Uh, that will have some uh, an unacceptable effect on this evaluation result, and this is a very good future res future research direction. Thank you very much. Thank you for your answer and thank you for your work. And I see that there are coming in some more questions. So you could take a look at Discord and answer them there. Uh, because now we uh, have to go on to the next presenter, who is uh, Shi Long Zhang, that will present their work on visual abstraction of geographical point data with spatial autocorrelations. Hi everyone, my name is Xin Long Zhang. It's my great honor to give a talk about the view abstraction of geographical point data with spatial autocorrelations. This is the gender of my talk. The first part is the motivation. Nowadays, geographical point data sets are easily collected, such as sensor data and traffic data. Scatter plots are always utilized to present the geographical point data sets with their attributes encoded with different view elements, such as sizes and colors. However, scatter plots often suffer from an overdraw problem. A large amount of view clutter will be generated in high-density regions, making it difficult to perceive the latent features of interest. A large number of methods are proposed to alleviate the overdraw problem, such as the density estimation and sampling. These methods focus on the spatial distribution of points, but the attributes important for geospatial exploration are ignored. In the field of geospatial statistics, autocorrelation is commonly used to represent the spatial relationships of attributes. Positive spatial autocorrelation is a tendency for those sites located nearby sharing similar attributes. 
Negative spatial autocorrelation is a tendency for the locations close together to have contrasting attributes. Spatial autocorrelation implies features of interest behind the observed spatial variation of attributes, so that it is important to preserve spatial autocorrelations in the sampled geographical point datasets. In our work, an attribute-based sampling method is proposed to preserve both the point densities and the spatial autocorrelations of geographical point datasets. As shown in the pipeline, more scatter plots are constructed to represent the spatial autocorrelations of geographical points. A z-order curve is utilized to organize geographical points, and attribute-based sampling is conducted to preserve both the spatial densities and autocorrelations. A set of viewer queues are designed to evaluate the sampled geographical points and optimize those ambiguous points. The attribute-based sampling method includes two steps. The first process is attribute modeling. We utilize the more scatter plots to capture local patterns of attribute association. In addition, we provide an optional layout in which the spatial autocorrelation features are visually enhanced. The second process is attribute-based sampling. We define two features to describe the spatial autocorrelations such as local and neighboring features. The standardized attribute value of the point is larger than zero, so we consider its local feature as h. The weighted attribute value of its neighboring point is smaller than zero, so we consider its neighboring feature as l. It can be seen that the spatial autocorrelation of a point hl is determined by its local and neighboring features. In the course of attribute-based sampling, we designed two schemes to select representative points to preserve their local and neighboring features. For a subset M, the local feature tends to be H according to scheme 1, since pH of M is larger than PL of M. The local features of the sampled points in all subsets are determined by scheme 1. The neighboring feature tends to be H according to scheme 2, thus a representative point with HH is sampled from M. Finally, we select the representative points from all unsampled subsets according to Scheme 2. We further provide viewer designs and interactions for evaluating and optimizing the sampled geographical points. We label ambiguous points with specific flags. For example, the red flag means that the spatial autocorrelation is changed from HH to HL. In addition, a stacked bar chart is designed to present the overall preservation of spatial autocorrelations. We propose an interactive strategy to optimize the ambiguous point. When an ambiguous point is clicked, optional points are distributed on an outer ring. Purple points with little fluctuation frequency are recommended as the samples. In the part of evaluation, real-world datasets are applied to conduct case studies. They are all extracted from a UK census dataset depicting attributes of different areas like working hours, health, and deprived households. Case 1, according to the color mapping based on the attribute values as shown in figure A, the distribution with respect to working hours is presented. Then, we change color mapping with autocorrelations, as shown in figure B. Three local areas are highlighted, but viewer clutter is generated, disturbing the exploration of geographical point datasets. Different sample results are presented in figure A, B, C, and D. The ambiguous points are highlighted in figure E, F, G, and H. Compared with our method, the other sampling methods generated more ambiguous points. The original autocorrelation of point Q is HH, as shown in figure H, which means that the working hours of Q and its neighboring areas are high enough, but it is changed in the z-order sampling result. Case 2, we pay attention to regions A and B to get a deeper insight into the causes of ambiguity. The ambiguous points are located in a border area between LL and HH. Thus, we think the neighboring features of these points are difficult to preserve because they are easily changed due to counteraction of attributes. Case 3, we pay attention to point P when clicked or candidates are distributed around. Then we click P1, P2, and P3 and find P3 is the best candidate because it maintains both the local and the global spatial autocorrelations in figure F. After a set of replacement operations, there is no ambiguity in the urban area as shown in figure C, 
The regions nearby the central and the coastal areas are characterized with LL. By contrast, the eastern region presents HH, indicating that the living conditions in this region were lower than that of central regions. To evaluate the effectiveness of our sampling method, quantitative comparisons are conducted by means of KDE error, histogram difference measure, and accuracy rate. The results are recorded in the table. The spatial autocorrelations are well preserved for all datasets by our method. For dataset 2 and dataset 3, our method and the order sampling achieve similar results on KDE error and HDM. For dataset 1, the sampled results obtained by our method are well preserved. There are still some issues, which will be addressed in the future work. Other attribute characteristics such as spatial variability are not fully considered. The temporary variation of attributes is not considered. The replacement-based optimization is time-consuming and just suitable for a small number of points. In conclusion, we propose an attribute-based sampling method for the view abstraction of large-scale geographical point visualization. A set of viewer cues enabling users to visually evaluate and interactively optimize the sampled geographical points. The effectiveness of our sampling method is demonstrated with case studies and quantitative comparisons based on the real-world data set. That's all about my talk. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for your presentation, Jin Long. Um, Thank you. I have a, a question. Um, you mentioned in your conclusions also that uh, the temporal aspect is not considered uh, in, the, in the work currently. Have you thought about how you could incorpor or incorporate it in the future? Mm, uh, as we know, the attributes of points usually vary with time. Uh, in the work, we focus on the analysis of static attributes and the temporary variation is not considered. So the results could not present uh, time varying features and contribute later to the analyst analysis of spatial temporary events. And so in the future work, we will integrate time attributes into our sampling model to preserve the spatial temporary features. Uh, specifically, we may divide divided data sets into several subsets according to their temporary information and then preserve the attribute features within each subset to maintain the time varying features. I hope this answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, another question um, is uh, you have used uh, like local and neighboring features for your classification. I'm wondering whether yeah. alternative uh, definitions or thresholds could be used instead and how that would affect sort of the results of your algorithm. I'm sorry, I think I missed your question. Could you repeat it? Could you, uh, would it be if you, uh, how could you use alternative methods instead of the local and neighboring features that you have used now for classifying your, um, the different points and how would that um, affect uh, the results the the local features we defined to um, aiming to uh, preserve the uh, average mean of the samples so uh, other alternative method we will further considered in the feature work and uh, and that it thank you thank you very much Mm -hmm. um, one more th thought I had. Um, currently, you use the um, Moran scatter plots for coloring your um, representation um, for assigning color according to the um, 
autocorrelations. Have you, could you have used or have you used sort of the more an index in your sampling also? Mm, the more index is uh, outlined to, uh, is used in our work and uh, to obtain the uh, spatial autocorrelations of uh, each point. And mm -hmm. uh, we, um, we mainly focus on the uh, spatial autocorrelation features such as uh, high values uh, surrounded by high values or low values surrounded by low values. So the more index indexed is, uh, is, there, is there only a value to, um, to present the spatial patterns uh, level. So um, something the, so the more indexed uh, is used to um, use to calculate the more scatter parts. So uh, in, the, in the work, we only to preserve the spatial patterns. So the more scatter parts is used to calculate. Uh, thank you. Thank you mm. very much. Thank you for your presentation uh, and for your answers. And we will move on now to the last presentation of this session, that is uh, STAL, Unbiased Online Sampling for Visual Exploration of Large Spatiotemporal Data. And the presenter is Jui Jung Wong. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Gui Jung Wang, a graduate student at Purdue University. Our work is an online sampling approach to large spatial temporal data. Large data processing triggers high computational latency, which postpones system responsiveness. Visualization systems can utilize data sampling to reduce latency and maintain interactive data exploration. For example, incremental visualization and progressive data analytics provide users quick answers and incrementally improve their accuracies. This incremental manner is leveraged by online sampling, which progressively retrieves more and more samples. This paper focused on online sampling of large spatial temporal data. In general, spatial data sampling use tree-based indexes to organize data. These approaches traverse trees from root to leaf to sample points. For example, the sample retrieval procedure randomly selects a green path. After the procedure reaches the green leaf, it will randomly select a few points from it. The same procedure repeats until the desired number of points is collected. However, this type of sampling is not efficient enough. First, repeated tree traversals are needed if more points are wanted. Second, if leaves are on a disk even for a few points, we need to load the entire leaf data into memory. This is time consuming because disk IO operation is at least one to two orders of magnitude slower than in memory access. In contrast, a buffer-based approach can reduce latency. Each buffer stores samples that have been retrieved from the spatial range of its linked cell. So a root sample buffer point can act as a sample set to approximate all the data in the tree. In addition, progressively merging children's buffers can form an online sampling manner. Regarding disk IOs, each buffer occupies a continuous region on the disk. A batch I.O. operation can sequentially scan the buffer region to retrieve samples, which is faster. The state-of-the-art fixed size design specifies that each buffer has the same number of points. However, this design cannot guarantee that each point has the same probability of being selected which result in sampling bias. Here is an example illustrating the bias issue. Suppose each buffer has 500 random points. In both tables, the numbers in red indicate the total number of points in a cell's spatial range, and the number in blue indicates the size of points satisfying a query in this range. Likewise, the same counting standards extend over sample buffers 
and the second rows. The union of data in both the orange and the green cell has 43.3% points satisfying the query. However, the sample set combining their buffers has 45% points satisfying the query. Therefore, the samples cannot accurately approximate the data set. This example shows visual comparison of Ohio highway traffic incident distributions approximated by 0.3% samples retrieved by the fixed size approach against the exact map. The right heat map indicates hotspots are mainly located on the west side of Ohio, but the exact heat map shows hotspots ac across the entire state. So sampling bias can distort patterns of data and render data exploration inefficient and inaccurate. Furthermore, in GeoS visual visual analytics systems, if sampling is biased toward specific regions, the visual display at the overview level could already be misleading. As a result, it would then exhibit the biased selection of relevant regions for further exploration. As a result, such erroneous interpretations can accumulate throughput the sense-making process. Also, since user trust in approximate answer is an intrinsic challenge, sampling bias can exhibit the trust issue in the incremental visualization or progressive analytics scenarios. Therefore, it is vital for sampling to be unbiased. To address the bias issue, we propose a proportionally sized design. In this design, each cell's buffer catches 100 alpha percent of its data. A sample buffer size is therefore proportional to the cell's specified data volumes. As such, the union of these cell's buffers will contain exactly 100 alpha percent of the data. So, the proportional size design can approximate the distribution of the query data without bias. 5% samples retrieved in our approach are at least 50% more accurate in representing the actual spatial distribution. Stars components include a data index and a social data sample retrieval procedure. Star indexes data with an ordered list of pyramids that represent the spatial temporal segmentation of data. The temporal range of data is first divided into equal-sized temporal beams. Within each beam, data is further indexed with a pyramid per its spatial dimensions. Each pyramid's height is 1 over alpha. In this example, alpha is 0 0.25. Each pyramid's non-leaf cells have sample buffers, which cache 100 alpha percent of random points. At the bottom level, Leaf cells store all the data within their ranges. For each leaf, we divided its data into one or other segments. These segments will be used to build non-leaf cells buffers. Take the leaf 1122 for example. The pink division is copied into ancestor 112's buffer. The purple division is copied into ancestor 11's, and the orange one is into the root. Suppose a VA system plans to use 100 theta percent points per incremental update. From each temporal bin, the sample retrieval procedure obtains the same ratio of points through the following steps. First, store randomly picks a pyramid level to start, for example, level 2. Then, in each incremental update, Level 2 cells buffers provide 100 theta over alpha percent points as data samples. After 1 over theta updates, the sample buffers are exhausted. Then the retrieval goes to the next level, level 3. Regarding the unbiased property, we provide a theoretical guarantee in the paper. The experiments chose two baseline approaches. 
storm. An online sampling approach using the fixed size, buffer design, and random paths, an unbiased approach to sampling instead of online sampling. We use the four real world datasets. Regarding accuracy in the spatial dimension, this figure uses RMSC to quantify the accuracy between approximate KDE results and the exact results. Overall, RMSC values and sample sizes are inversely correlated. As the same sample size storm has the most significant RMSC values and the other two are almost the same, when the sample size is 5%, storm's RMSC value is at least twice as much as the other. This figure shows incremental visualization of approximate spatial heat maps created by storm and star. Overall, heat maps of both approaches progressively get closer to the visual appearance of the exact ones. At a smaller sample size, both heat maps have perceptible differences in low density areas. But regarding hot spots, Stars heat maps keep constant during the incremental updates. However, hotspots in the storm case have noticeable changes when the sample size are smaller. This experiment shows the time spent progressively retrieving samples from in-memory data indexes. Both storm and star have almost the same sample latencies, which are overall shorter than random paths. On average, at the same sample size, star saved at least 60% of random paths time. We compare sample retrieval latency between star and random paths when an index was stored in hard drives. Regarding the time of retrieving 5% points, random paths is slower than star by averagely 3 to 4 seconds, but in the GU case, the two almost take the same time because GU points are extremely concentrated in a few leaves. As a result, the time needed for random paths to load points from other leaf cells is negligible. In summary, this paper presents an approach to online sampling of large spatial temporal data. Our approach ensures that each point is unbiasedly selected. Experiments have verified his accuracy, so our approach is suitable for time-critical online sampling scenarios. In the future, we wish to enhance the disk-based retrieval performance. Compared to the fixed size design, the proportional size design has lower disk space utilization, which is no good for disk I.O. So our next step is to enhance this part. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions are welcomed. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Uh, please post any questions you have in the Discord and I will direct them to Jing Zheng. Uh, I have a question in the meantime. Um, could you have your approach, is it uh, applicable also to other types of data that are not sort of strictly geographical or 2D? Other types of spatial data? I'm sorry, we don't hear you, or I don't hear. Um, uh, the of the paper is not 
Thank you. I don't know if it is only me that have a problem uh, with hearing you, but uh, hopefully it is. <laughs> um, do you? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, should we perhaps then try and uh, there appears to be some problem with the sound. So maybe we can take uh, any questions we have uh, offline or rather online, but off screen. <laughs> um, and with that, I would like to thank you, Winchen, for your presentation and for your work. And I would like to thank all the presenters today. Big applause. Uh, and we should take any more questions over Discord. Thank you very much. Tableau helps you see the stories in your data. It's designed to help you be smarter, so you can make better decisions faster. With Tableau, you can keep on asking questions in the data until you discover the root cause. Share your analysis securely. Your entire organization can access these interactive dashboards from any browser or mobile device to find their own answers. Tableau, answer questions at the speed of thought. The mixture graph is a data structure for compressing, rendering and querying segmented volumes. Biomedical segmentations have evolved from mere annotations to first-class modalities. The mixture graph stores the computations required to render such nominal data directly on the GPU, including pre-filtering and lighting. Segment distributions can be queried efficiently using regions of interest. Data stakeholders are rarely the data experts. Making tools for them means considering how they communicate about data. Rules are a convenient way for humans to express patterns in data, like we need high variable X and low variable Y. In our human in the loop approach, the user selects points of interest and can immediately see rules that differentiate those data from the rest. Lots more detail in the paper, even though it's short. Firstly, we extract contours of virions and distribution of spike proteins. From a newly estimated contour a 3D mesh with evaluated triangles is obtained. In the last step, rules describing relations between protein instances are defined by the user. The resulting model is created by application of all rules on the generated 3D mesh.
In cancer research, it's useful to group patients based on disease spread patterns to the lymph nodes. But once we create a new clustering methodology using spatial data, how do we explain spatial clustering to non-experts? In this multi-year project, we dealt with both a participatory design stage and a broader dissemination stage, and distilled specific lessons for interpreting spatial clusters. Many techniques can be used to render and visually explore large 3D line sets with transparency. However, all these techniques differ in several aspects such as runtime performance, memory consumption, and image quality. In this work, we provide an extensive comparison study to discuss the advantages and drawbacks of transparency rendering techniques for large line datasets. We present our work on data visualization, a technique which helps facilitate understanding of physical measurements and quantities by providing visible experiences to users in virtual reality. This allows them to experience the ground truth of what the data is in reality as compared to the abstract nature of conventional data visualization. We hope our work will spur new considerations into how immersive technologies can be used for visualizing information and that you will find it interesting.
Tableau helps you see the stories in your data. It's designed to help you be smarter, so you can make better decisions faster. With Tableau, you can keep on asking questions in the data until you discover the root cause. Share your analysis securely. Your entire organization can access these interactive dashboards from any browser or mobile device to find their own answers. Tableau, answer questions at the speed of thought. Do you have a research question but aren't sure how to go about answering it? Are you interested in collaborating with psychologists but want to learn more about how they do research? Our paper presents a comprehensive toolkit of empirical methods organized across four categories to help you think about presenting visualizations as experimental stimuli in order to explore and measure how people perceive data. Check out our paper. In this work, we conducted a design study with clinical researchers to develop a visual analytics application for exploring disease progression pathways. As a result, we developed DPVIS, which seamlessly integrates hidden markup models with interactive visualizations. The usage scenario and user experiences demonstrate the usefulness of the application to gain useful insights out of disease progression trajectories in a transparent manner. We present columnar data augmentation through visual analytics. Kava lets users augment their data with additional attributes found on knowledge graphs. To construct a new attribute, each row of a data set is mapped to a node on a knowledge graph. Each augmented datum is the result of a query over the knowledge graph in the neighborhood of that node. Tableau helps you see the stories in your data. It's designed to help you be smarter, so you can make better decisions faster. Connect to the data you care about. Sort, highlight, drill down, or filter your data in seconds. Add calculations to extend your data. With Tableau, you can keep on asking questions in the data until you discover the root cause. Tableau, answer questions at the speed of thought. We propose data-driven space filling curves. Our new method generates linearizations that better preserve coherency than existing techniques. Our method supports 3D datasets and even multi-scale data on a quad tree or an arc tree. Many visualizations benefit from our method. For example, visualization of multivariate particles and visualization We introduce a direct volume rendering approach that can render encrypted images directly from encrypted data sets. The rendering is performed by operations in the encrypted number space which are dual to operations in the plain text space. Therefore, the rendering system does not need to decrypt the data. This homomorphic volume rendering approach makes it possible to use untrusted servers for rendering without compromising privacy. It is common for users to struggle to understand how to effectively use TSME. No idea how to select hyperparameters, assess the quality of the results, investigate the existence of shapes and other patterns. TBSME covers all these tasks. We provide diverse projections to choose from, global and local quality assessment, investigations of shapes and patterns, and more.
blockchain has gained more attention and its applications are emerging. We collect 76 blockchain visualization tools and systematically classify them into five aspects. Target blockchain, blockchain data, target audience, task domain, and visualization type. In the end, we look at open challenge in blockchain visualization. Traditional clustering tools do not include users in the analysis loop. We present PK clustering, a new approach for interactive clustering using PowerViz. First, users specify their prior knowledge. Several algorithms are run and match with the prior knowledge. Users then build a consolidated clustering iteratively with suggestions based on consensus, the graph, and their knowledge of the data. The result is a consolidated clustering. Hey everyone, I'm Jun Han Zhao, a PhD candidate at Purdue University Computer Graphics major and a research internship at Bosch Research North America. Here, we are presenting our recent research across the viewer using factorized prototypes to visually interpret and diagnose deep neural network. This work is co-authored by research scientists at Bosch, Zhen Dai, Dr. Pan Pan Xu, and Dr. Liu Ren. Tableau helps you see the stories in your data. It's designed to help you be smarter so you can make better decisions faster. Connect to the data you care about. Sort, highlight, drill down, or filter your data in seconds. Add calculations to extend your data. With Tableau, you can keep on asking questions in the data until you discover the root cause. Tableau, answer questions at the speed of thought. Being able to perform visual analysis on sensitive data in a privacy-preserving way has become more and more important. In this work, we look at two major research questions in differentially private data visualization towards better understanding of the relationship between the privacy parameter, visualization type, the analytic tasks, and users' performance through cross-source user study and simulated comparisons. To interactively explore and visually analyze large multivariate data, for example, the cosmological simulation that is clustered into dark matter halos, we create a probabilistic data model in each cluster. We present a complete visual analysis system based on this data representation, which is especially well suited for the density-based visualizations shown here. We present AgentViz, an application for the visual analysis of core center agent behavior using hierarchical glyphs. Our application relies on a data-driven scatterplot layout with each glyph representing an individual core center agent. We demonstrate the application with nearly 5 million cores who interact with over 6,500 core center agents. To reduce clutter, we present a dynamic aggregating glyph clustering technique that varies with zoom level, maximizing the screen space.
Language models are highly performant across many language understanding tasks. Comprehending the linguistic knowledge encoded by these models, however, remains a challenging problem. We introduced an approach for visually analyzing contextualized embeddings produced by language models. Our design shows how much context is captured by embeddings, the ability of embeddings to capture meaningful text spans, and linguistic relationships represented by the embeddings. We present a high-quality tube rendering method for 3D line datasets. TPU-based ray casting is used to render line segments as rounded cones to allow for smooth connections along individual lines and variation in radius. We support transparency by a novel approach combining visibility order rendering with an order-independent transparency method. To improve depth and feature perception, ambient occlusion is employed. The transmission of pathogens such as bacteria and viruses is an acute problem in hospitals around the world. Infection control experts need to monitor infections and determine transmission pathways. We developed a novel visual analytics system for the exploration of disease outbreaks. It combines several interactive views and a tracing interaction that allows to detect pathogen transmissions. We present an interface to visually analyze and steer zero-shot learning models. Our interface is designed to diagnose attribute mispredictions to convey potential failure modes in zero-shot learning. Using our interface, the user can select multiple categories for analysis. We allow the user to steer the model by changing the weights of potentially problematic attributes based on their analysis. We present an efficient approach for volume and isosurface ray tracing of structured AMR data on GPU-equipped workstations using a combination of two different data structures. Together, these data structures allow a ray tracing-based renderer to quickly determine which segments along the ray need to be integrated and at what frequency, while also providing quick access to all data values required for a smooth sample reconstruction kernel. There are many similarities between visual analytics and interactive optimization. The design of visual interfaces for optimization systems is an application of visual analytics. However, many optimization systems are automated. If you are thinking of building an interactive optimization system, come to our talk. We have prepared some tips for you. Region-based vortex measures are commonly used to extract vortices. The ideal threshold to extract the vortex boundary, however, varies spatially. To detect vortices without manual thresholding, we utilize supervised deep learning. For the regression, we evaluate three recent network architectures. The resulting networks are able to detect vortices that grow in size due to diffusion, despite their angular momentum becoming smaller.
Exploring the emotions of students in classroom videos can help both teachers and parents know about students' learning status and further help teachers improve teaching. However, it is a non-trivial task to analyze the emotion evolution of a group of people from classroom videos due to three major challenges. We propose a visualization system which integrates the model uncertainty and supports both collective and individual emotion analysis. Tableau helps you see the stories in your data. It's designed to help you be smarter so you can make better decisions faster. Connect to the data you care about. Sort, highlight, drill down, or filter your data in seconds. Add calculations to extend your data. With Tableau, you can keep on asking questions in the data until you discover the root cause. Tableau, answer questions at the speed of thought.